So while we're on the subject of MIT, you yeah. reference Chomsky a lot when you're uh, in your linguistic stuff. Yes. Um, you, you must have been colleagues there then for... for Not in the same time. department because he was in linguistics and I was in cognitive science, but certainly colleagues at the same uh, institute, yeah. And for people that don't know much about Chomsky, how, who, can you give a bio for him or could you tell a little bit about him? Well, he is, he is famous for two reasons. One of them is his political activism. He is a... Uh, very vociferous critic of American and British foreign policy. He is a, a leftist, but not Marxist. He's a, he calls himself an anarcho-syndicalist, wow. which is a kind of anarchist, uh, anarchist of the left. There's also a right-wing anarchist movement, kind of more libertarian, uh, objectivist, Ayn Rand uh, style, but he is more of a communitarian, uh, libertarian anarchist. Uh, but anyway, a fierce critic of Israel, of Britain, of the U.S., uh, and, and an early critic of the Vietnam War. Uh, and he has a huge following because of his prolific output in politics. I mean, probably more than, than 100 books. He's on the, uh, the Rage Against the Machine, cites him in their liner notes. I think Chumbawamba <laughs> had one of his lectures on the, the B-side of one of their, uh, their, their records, when there used to be records. But then he is also famous for having really founded the modern approach to linguistics, starting in the 1950s when he was uh, just in his 20s. He pretty much revolutionized the field. He uh, polarized the field. Most people in linguistics are either uh, rabidly uh, in favor of his theories or determined to bring him down, not an entirely healthy state of affairs. So a polarizing figure in linguistics as he is in politics. But in linguistics, he was the first to give linguistics a, uh, a psychological spin, saying that the, the problem of uh, the study of language is really a problem of how human children acquire language, which they do without any lessons or, or instruction or not much in the way of feedback. Uh, this, to him, suggested that human children are born with a... Uh, uh, circuitry in the brain that is specialized for acquiring language uh, by noting that language is not just a list of sentences. Uh, every sentence that we're uttering uh, is probably uttered for the first time in the history of the, the universe, but we nonetheless can produce and understand sentences fluently. That means that there must be something in the brain uh, that is a, an algorithm or a, a, a recipe for generating and interpreting sentences rather than a memorized list. And that this changed the whole uh, mission statement for linguistics. It wasn't just listing a bunch of constructions, but rather uh, it was what is the uh, mental software that allows us to use language, and, the and, and prior to that, the mental software that allows us to acquire language. Also, he uh, argued that all languages conform to a universal plan, what he called a universal grammar, which uh, he then related to the uh, hypothetical innate circuitry with which children acquire language, that that's where language universals come from. They come from the human brain. So you, you subscribe to the, the, the idea of the metagrammar as well? Uh, to, uh, to, to, to some extent. I, don't, um, uh, I, I think Chomsky's particular theories of grammar are uh, a little too complicated and exotic for my blood. I think they're kind of needlessly complicated. Uh, and whenever you have a theory that is so identified with one individual, whether it be Freud or Piaget or any big theorist, uh, it, it's never exactly the truth because it, it, this is all bigger than any of us. And uh, uh, a field that is too uh, oriented either for or pro or con one person's ideas, I think is, gonna, is somewhat distorted. But I do think that he had some important insights. Uh, I think the idea that children are specialized for learning language is on the right track. I think the, I, the idea that what is interesting about language is the mental software that allows us to learn and use it, I think that's a, a positive agenda. Uh, and then there, he, he also introduced a number of technical um, ideas, the fact that uh, a uh, a sentence is not just, first of all, it's not just a string of words. It's not just one word reminds you of the next one that reminds you of the next one reminds you of the next one. And so you have a chain of word associations. But there is a hierarchical structure. Words are grouped into phrases, which are grouped into bigger phrases, which are grouped into sentences. The fact that even that is not quite enough to explain how language uh, works, because then there are also uh, ways in which we mangle those um, hierarchical phrase structure trees. We 
snip a word from one place and glue it somewhere else, what he called transformations. So when I, when I say, uh, what did you eat this morning? Uh, the what refers to the position after eat, namely whatever it is that you ate. And to understand how we can ask a question, you have to uh, add an additional bit of machinery to the algorithm that allows us to speak, namely one that relates uh, words in, in multiple positions in a sentence. That's another te technical innovation led to the concept of deep structure. Uh, so I think all of those are genuine and, and uh, long-lasting contributions to our understanding of how language works.